Okay, ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, I'm getting ready to call it a night, and it has been a long day, but I just realized the amount of videos, we have three videos each longer than, on average, an hour and 25 minutes each. Three videos, hour and 25 minutes each for you guys, explaining that wonderful little promissory note and dealing with those wonderful little idiots who want to tell you that you owe a debt when there is no money. Everything is paper. Everything is paper. Everything is paper. So if everything is paper and we live in a paper society and they're trying to go to what they call paperless and that's a lie, they'd have to change the, pay attention, the entire monetary system in order to go paperless. I just showed you all about eligible papers. Eligible papers describe what money is in the United States. Now, of course, we know credit is money. Credit has always been money in the United States. It's always been money in the world. Nobody knows this. Go back and look at the earliest times when you find out about the earliest transactions between people. Even in the scriptures, an individual who owed a debt could not take, or who was owed a debt, could not take somebody's garment, which they used to keep themselves cool or warm, and hold it overnight. They couldn't take a person's food. They couldn't take their primary residence. Nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. Individuals, you remember Mr. Wimpy? on um, Popeye, how he would pay the person on Tuesday if they gave him blah, blah, blah today? What do you think they were joking about, people? We're all on borrowed currency. It's all IOUs, everything. Huh. It's been a long two months, January to February trying to make sure I give you guys enough information to take care of things. Look, to my surprise, and I will say to my surprise, it is not possible for one person to have so much information. Go ahead. I don't study this stuff. I just know what I know. But I'll explain it again so that you will understand it. That's why I keep telling people, go prove me wrong. Prove that I said something that's incorrect. Treat me like I treat ChatGPT. But show me proof the same way I do ChatGPT. Ladies and gentlemen, or Bard, or Gemini, or any of that junk. I won't be doing Bard. Bard will not be getting a dime from me uh, because there are too many restrictions on Bard. Google keeps doing that knee-jerk thing, and I can't handle that. This, no, this, one, this video will not be long. What I'm going to do for people, those of you who are really fighting legal battles, I need to let you know why I wasn't doing motions. But well, technically, everybody who's gotten a consult for me had me doing some documents for them. But the reason why I wouldn't do documents for people is because they don't know how to respond when somebody comes at them with a, a blah, blah, this or a blah, blah, that. When some attorney blah, 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 just open in the mouth or just put in paper, uh, words on paper, and the person doesn't know how to respond back to the idiot because they don't know what they're saying. So for those of you who are out there who need help putting together motions, I will let you know this. Most attorneys charge $2,500, 15 to $2,500 for doing motions for you. I don't do that. I'll never charge anybody that. Even when I was inside an institution and they were trying to treat me like I was a punk, even the inmates, I still kept it simple because I'll never, ever do anything more than that. What I'm saying now, now here's the other thing. With the consult, doing motions for people, please, that takes half of the consult. Oh, no, 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 I'm not going to. Do the consult and then do the motion later? No, God, no. <laughs> You're paying for my time. So the motion gets done during the consult. Why? 
so that you can see how it's done, so that you can do the exact same thing, so that you can see the thought process. That's the whole point. And I will start telling people what they can expect and how to respond to when they respond. Look, when I say I've been doing this since I was 15 years old, I don't joke with you about that. I've had to respond. I've, I've seen the responses. I've been in too many court cases to sit up here and not know what to do. So video number 26 is going to tell you guys how to handle small claims court. It's not, I'm not going to tell you the thing that those lawyers who are doing YouTube videos are going to tell you. I'm going to tell you the things about how to properly sue a person in small claims court, because I've already been through that, and how not to sue a corporation. You cannot sue a corporation in small claims court. Well, I said a corporation, yeah, and they had an attorney, so shut up. Ladies and gentlemen, I will show you how to go into small claims court and how to bring three simple issues and make sure you stick to those three simple issues so that you can preserve and bring other issues. Just in case you lose that case, you just go back at the same party and you sue them under different violations. Three at a time. That's why we gave you and we gave our clients documents that have more than six different issues they can go at the idiots with. Okay? If you don't think I know what I'm talking about, then don't email me, don't ask for my services, don't watch the videos. But if I show you proof that I know what I'm talking about, then there you go. There you have it. Oh, by the way, ask yourself this question. If I didn't know what I was doing, why would attorneys be getting together and talking about me? I've gotten three people who tell me that they're a part of these chat rooms where attorneys come and meet. And they're talking about me. Why are they talking about me? What? Out of all the people on this planet, there are over 300 million people in America. And they're talking about me? Million adults, excuse me. And they're talking about me? Why? Out of all the people in this country, why are they talking about me? Must be something. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, I said I wasn't going to do consults anymore. I promise you, it is taxing. But where else is it going to go? I talked to somebody today. This is what's leading to this. I talked to somebody today, and they said they listened to somebody else, and he told them to do this, and he told them to do that, and they did that, and now the court, one of them is in jail because they did what somebody else told them to do. Ladies and gentlemen, it's not my job to tell you to do something that's going to end you in jail. I'm not going to tell you to be filing this paperwork and filing that paperwork. I'm going to tell you to file the paperwork that the law says you have a right to file. And I'm going to tell you to put the facts on the record. And I'm going to tell you how not to argue with the judge. See, you can't talk to the judge like I do. Oh, no, God, no, you'll never get away with that. But I'll tell you how you should be talking to the judge and what you need to be emphasizing and what not to pay attention to. Judges say a lot of superficial junk that don't make no sense. A judge doesn't have the right to question you. If you put it in writing, say, excuse me, I'm not going to play that game with you. That's what I would be saying. I'm not going to sit up here and play the game with you where you ask me a question so that you can construe it to mean something different than what I've already put on record. What I put on record is put in English. Go ahead and read it in English and then understand that's my answer to your question. Now, if you got a problem with that, I don't have a problem with it, but if you got a problem with it, then here. All right, y'all ready? I come before the court today, and this lawsuit, what? You don't want me to read the whole thing? Well, you just asked me a question. I told you it's in here. You have a problem with it, so I'm going to put the whole thing on the record so that you don't have to ask me no more questions, so that you don't sit up here and play that game with me about you didn't read this, and if you didn't read it, and if you didn't understand it in this contextual process and contextual form, then you need to get your behind out of this courtroom and off of that bench because it's inappropriate for you to be here. Ladies and gentlemen, I watched the court case today where this court TV idiot uh, was doing an interview on these guys who they claim were sovereign citizens. And they went in the court and they told the court and they asked the court question. And the court said, I don't have time for this is what the judge said. Now, it's obvious that these guys are not used to going before judges and that they were just trying to challenge the jurisdiction and all of that. But the bailiff, the police officer, that, oh, excuse me, he's not a police officer. He's a security officer. There are no police officers in the court building, ladies and gentlemen. Those are security officers. The police are part of the executive branch. They do not have any authority inside a courthouse. 
They are private security. They are being paid by the court, not by the police department. They're on loan. They are private officers at that point. They have no authority. They are not police when they're in that building. But because many of you guys don't know this, you don't know how to deal with them. The officer was sitting up there yelling at the guy and telling him this, and he didn't tell the officer, excuse me, this ain't got nothing to do with you. Shut your mouth and get out of my face. You have no authority in this room. I'm talking to her. You are not part of the court. I don't even care if they call you an officer of the court. You're just security. So stop talking to me as if you got some authority over me. You see, that's how I talk to police officers. I talk to people and they say, well, the police officer, the officer said I had to stand up. Man, they come over to me and say, sir, you got to stand. I said, you better go ask him whether or not I got to stand. Go ahead and tell him whether I have to stand or not. That's me in court, people. I've done it several times. And that idiot officer ends up walking away. I ain't got to stand for nobody. You're the one who has to stand. Then the judge told this guy in this court case to sit down. Excuse me? Who do you think you're talking to? No, you talk to a dog that way. You don't get to talk to me that way. Sit down. Who do you think you are? That's my conversation with the judge. Woman, I am not your boy. How dare you make such a racist comment to me like that? They don't like it when I do that to them. Well, she told me to sit down like I was a slave. You know what I mean? That's where it would go. So what I'm trying to say in a nutshell is I was watching that case. Those individuals had gotten information from somebody, but they got the wrong information. Ladies and gentlemen, people are trying to rebut the court's presumption, and they don't even understand the basic structure of the court. They don't understand the existence of the court and how the court is what they are. Look, the laws that you did not know exist, go over that document. You can find it on the SACOM website. Go over the document. The laws that you did not know exist. What I'm asking you to do is go over the part about jurisdiction. Read it. Understand it. Understand what your challenges are. Most of those cases you're not going to find online. The ones that have a little blue highlight, you'll find those because those are current cases that we got off of case tech. But the other ones you find on there, many of those cases, even though some of them are United States Supreme Court cases, are unpublished cases. It doesn't make – look, what's the difference between a published case and an unpublished case? Nothing. They were decisions made by the court, so they're still binding jurisdictionally, but they're still binding so you want to take the words. You don't want to take the case. Forget the stupid case. There's no such thing as case law. When the judges are issuing a decision, they're relying on principles of law. So take their words made in the decision and run with that. Repeat that. Don't talk about intensely versus Pagliaro. And the Supreme Court has already decided that no attorney can testify. Either he's an attorney or he's a witness, but he cannot be both. So if he's offering testimony, I do hereby object, and I ask that you recuse him immediately and notify the party that he's supposed to represent of the breach of contract because he cannot go from being a witness back to being an attorney. It is illegal. You want to let him testify? He's a witness. That means he gets to be cross-examined. From this point on, he will be construed as a witness. I don't give a what you think. He sat up there and gave testimony. He's going to be a witness from this point on. I don't give up what you say, woman. I'm going to follow the law, and I'm going to follow the rules. He gave testimony. That means he's here to testify. He's an attorney. He's deemed to know the law. And because he's deemed to know the law, that means that he purposely operated as a witness, already decided by the Supreme Court. So I don't need to hear your mouth telling me what is and what isn't. The Supreme Court has already said it, and you're bound by star to cease to be quiet and go according to what the Supreme Court has said. You all cannot talk to them that way. There's no law that will allow you to talk to them that way. I do because I know what I'm saying, and I know how I'm saying it, and I know what words I'm using, and I know why I'm saying it, and I know that they can't challenge me. I know that they can't invoke their emotions or feelings. The moment they do, they deal with me. That's why I'm telling you guys, the thing that nails them in the head is going after their bond. And you go after the judge's bond for this claim, and then you bring another claim after that bond, and you bring another claim after that bond, that's all she wrote. Oh, and by the way, going after the bond, it's not a violation of the law that was passed by Bush 
in 2006. Shh, don't tell nobody. Hey, got to go. Y'all take care. Less than 15. 